everyone. Um, let's start lesson two from topic five. This is dynamic and resilient ecosystems. Let's get started. Um, so first let's define succession. So succession is the series of predictable changes that occur in a community over time. So this could be um, a great amount of years. And if we think back to what a community is, a community is um, all the different living things in an area. So succession is the series of predictable changes that occur within um, living things over time in a specific area. So there's two types of succession. There's primary succession and secondary succession. So in primary succession, soil and organisms don't exist yet. So it's just bare rock, basically. And this could be caused by um, a disruption like lava from a uh, volcanic eruption, or it could even be like an abandoned paved parking lot or a nuclear explosion. Um, over time, this bare rock will become a huge community of things um, and living things will be able to colonize the area. The first species to populate an area is called a pioneer species. So pioneer species, they're the first to get there, the first to um, start breaking down that rock. So it's usually mosses and lichen and they're able to break down rock into soil and start the process. Okay, so looking at this, we start with bare rock in primary succession, and then lichens come or uh, mosses come and they break down that soil. As they're breaking down that soil, um, seeds come um, either through the wind or uh, passing organisms and things like that. And then small plants and continuing with lichens, they start to grow more. Um, the matter from dead plants or waste comes and produces more soil and um, develops that soil to make to have better nutrients and then um, more developed plants is like um, plants like grasses and perennials come um, they're further breaking down that rock um, and then they build up organic matter over time and improve the soil um, there's more soil so there could be plants with deeper roots um, like shrubs and pines and over time, the soil improves more and more and there's more diverse community established. That's called a climax community, when there's a more diverse community that's established. And this could take a very long time. This could take centuries. So primary succession, that's a very slow um, succession where it starts with rock and then lichens break down the soil and then smaller plants are e introduced um, more soil is developed and uh, more nutrients are in the soil and then um, bigger plants like shrubs and trees come and then there's a climax community with a great diversity. Okay, um, so the second succession is secondary succession. Um, the soil and organisms already exist. So this could be from fire or hurricanes, um, tornadoes, even farming and mining. So this occurs more rapidly than primary succession. So it starts with an already um, climax community and then something is disrupting it like a natural disaster or this fire. And um, there's nothing but like soil and um, maybe some seeds left. And then the grasses and other species come and grow and it develops into a climax community once again. So um, eight looks exactly like one in this picture. Okay, and this occurs again more rapidly than primary succession. So let's look, there's a fire, and then there's um, not a lot of species, there's, or, um, there's still soil there, so soil is present. And then um, in a couple years, the annual plants come back, and then there's grasses and perennials, so um, smaller plants and then larger, more developed plants, and then they're all competing. And then there's a climax community within 150 years, so a lot quicker than primary succession. 
Okay, um, so let's talk about ecosystem destructions and population survival. So organisms usually don't survive rapid changes in its ecosystems, and the ones that do have those adaptations that help them survive. So an example of this is the longleaf pine. Um, they actually have a great amount of fire adaptations. Um, they have silver scales um, that reflect the heat, long moist needles that protect the growing tip from scorching, there's no low branches, and there's a corky bark that flakes off when it burns. So all of these adaptations allow the longleaf pine um, to survive better in fires. Okay, so that's just an adaptation that um, occurs when there are rapid changes in an ecosystem like a fire or a hurricane. Okay, and that's it for uh, lesson two. I hope this helped. And if you have any questions, as always, you can message us, okay?